<laughs> skill sets. We're gonna learn skill sets today. Okay. These outlets are ugly. Yeah, they're awful. They also don't have power to them. How do we know that? Because uh, we had this little thingy <laughs> that's you, yeah, you you plug it in and then you stick it in and it tells you there's power right, or not. All right, tell tell people what that thingy is. I don't actually know what it's called. It's a voltmeter. I knew that. I was just testing you. It also does the other things besides volts. So what we're going to do today is we're going to remove these okay. ugly things. Just yank on and, it really hard, and right? Like before, we uh, we already tested it, so we know yeah. kind of what's going on. But we're going to walk through if you didn't know what's yeah. going on. So that's a voltmeter. Yep. Uh, this is a digital voltmeter. This is actually made by Fluke, which is one of the best companies there is. But you can buy one of these almost anywhere. It's just maybe not as accurate as a Fluke, but it still works just fine. And so you have uh, different settings here. So the, the setting with the little uh, wavy arrow on it yeah. is what, do you know? That's alternating current. Okay. Up and down and up and down. So what is the next one? Volts. Direct current. Direct current, right? The straight line. What do you think M volts is? MV. I don't know. Millivolts. Millivolts. Okay. It would measure much smaller voltage, right? Okay. Do you know what that symbol is for? That's an omega symbol, isn't That's it? That's a mega symbol. What's it for? I don't know. It's resistance. Resistance. Okay. So what we want to do is, let's say we wanted to find out there's a wire here, over here, and there's a wire over there. We want to see if it's the same wire. Okay. If we if we put and let's just say that's the beginning of the wire and that's the end of the wire, if we put a probe on one end of the wire and a probe on the other end of the wire, there should be no resistance. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Oh. Hang on, it's going. So if we if we touch the wires together, watch what happens. There's 0.1 ohms resistance, which is very little. Okay. I think there's rust on this. <laughs> so if we put this on this metal and we put it over here. We've got resistance because of the rust on the screwdriver. Mm -hmm. There it went 1.2. See that? Yeah. It's all over the place. Yeah. So there's root. See the rust? Yeah. That's actually what causes problems a lot of times with um, uh, DC like mowers and and motorcycles and things like that. Rust. Tail lights. Tail lights are notorious. You get a little rust, just a little bit of rust like that will stop conductivity for electricity interesting yeah it is so we're gonna we use a we use a voltmeter and then the other thing here this is the same thing that little that little symbol right there yeah that's the same thing it just beeps for you so you don't have to look at it that's nice so if you got if you have no resistance okay it just lets you know so we do we do here see yeah how about you how about holding your holding together uh, should should you get hold it yep so you don't get any right yeah Sometimes you can get water in there and it'll, you'll, it'll get resistance. So that's the resistance through your body. One mega ohm. That's a lot of ohms. It's a lot of resistance right through your yeah. body, but it's not completely unresistant. Okay, that measures diodes. Okay. That's amperage. Amperage DC, yeah. amperage AC. All right, so this, this circuit is, is what volts? 12. <clears throat> Next guess. Okay, that was my only guess. 12 volts is, where do you find 12 volts? In batteries. In batteries, in your car. Is this from a battery? No. No. So this is not direct current. This is alternating, alternating current. current. Alternating current is 120 volts. Okay. Unless it's two wires together for a bigger motor, then it's those two wires together is 240 volts. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is we're going to remove this, but we just don't want to go sticking screwdrivers in here. Yeah. Without knowing that it's dead. Right? Yeah. So. We can, we just test it, right? So we put this on what? I want you to do this. Okay. So you put it on what? You put it on the alternating current. Alternating current, alternating volt, yep. And you stick the probes in there and see if there's any voltage. And when you stick them in there, you wanna kinda of move it around and make sure you get good contact everywhere. So there's nothing, yeah. right? So we know there's no voltage there. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is you stick a screwdriver in there without testing, Yeah. you get you'll weld something. Yeah. You'll weld it together because that's what a welder is. A welder is just, you're putting current directly together so it passes through whatever you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so we want to take the cover off. So we have tools here. The other thing is when you take out an outlet or anything, you don't know what's in that box. Yeah. It could be wasps, spiders, 
especially when it's outside, right? So you just want to keep that in mind. Oh, thank you. You also want to make sure you don't drop that screw. There you go. So what's been living in there? Anything? Spoilers. Yep. All right, so now we want to take the outlet out because the box itself is attached to this wood and there's a screw behind that outlet. Okay. This thing is probably 50 years old. So today they use um, Phillips on there so you can use a driver. It's a lot easier. And then once we get the outlet out, then we'll take the box off. Very funny. <laughs> and you always look and say, do I want to save that? Probably not. It's been out here and outside for 20 years, probably or more. Yeah. So it's probably not worth saving. An outlet like that's about 89 cents. Yeah, okay. You know, so it's really not worth keeping for something. Okay. All right, now you pull the outlet out. Here, I'll hold this stuff for you. You go ahead and pull the outlet out. Oh. This is where you watch for spiders and stuff. Fun. Got the screwdriver? Yeah. So you'll notice how the wires, sometimes there's a whole lot of wires in there. It's not this way. They just barely have enough wires. Sometimes there's a whole lot of wires in there. So when you go to put it in, you bring it down like this. You push the wires down like this and then push it up. And then you have an S on your wires and, it, and the outlet will fit in. All right, so how do we, what do we got? Oh, we got Phillips. That's good. There you go. Nice. Yep. So the names of these things, so you know. This is the outlet cover, the outlet plate. Yep. Wherever that went. This yep. One. That's the outlet plate, and it has a gasket on it because it's outdoors. Yep. It has a rubber gasket on it that's shot. Okay. okay. This is the outlet itself, and this is the outlet box. Okay. And then, of course, this is wire, right? Yeah. So there's part of it. Now we got to get this off. Now these plates are done so that, see the slot in it? Yeah. So you only have, you really only take one out and then the cover will slide off. Usually, or a lot of times, off, right? well a lot of times, see, it's a little slotted like that. Yeah. So you can just, you, you move it over, come off the screw and slide it right off. Yeah. So you don't have to take the screws There's a wasp nest in there. A nice. bunch of wasps. Nice, huh? No, looks like they're all gone for now. They're all hatched, all gone. But that's why you pay attention to stuff like this, right? Yeah. All right, so now we've got... This is a connection box. So, which is pretty bad, really, because... It, first of all, it's pretty ugly. Yeah. Right. But all this does is extend the wires from here to here. Yeah. So now we pull this box. That's not going to happen. Why not? What is that? Looks like we need. Ah. That is. And it's not though. Can you believe that? So there's more than one way to skin a cat. No cats around here, are there? Oh, that's got to come out. Okay, so we're gonna have to go find us a 316. That's a 316 socket head. Can you believe that? That's awful. I think that's 316. These are cutters. Okay. These are very. These will cut. These will cut you pretty badly if you get your finger in there. Okay. So, but these are used for cutting wire. There you go. Yep. Thank you. Close as you can down to the concrete. Please do not. We shoot. obviously cannot get into the concrete, so we're just gonna have to live with that wire sitting above the concrete there. That's a little that was poured in the concrete. Oh, yellow jacket's liking something around here, isn't it? <laughs> so there's there's an electrical lesson, right? Yes, sir. So we tested it yep. to make sure it wasn't live. Uh-huh. We took apart the outlet and the outlet box. Mm -hmm. And then we took apart, we're gonna take apart this junction box. These are called wire nuts. So all wire nuts do is protect the wires from touching each other because so if we touch those together and there was a live circuit it would be what's called a short circuit mm -hmm. and it would spark and blow a fuse okay because it's or a breaker because it's uh, unlimited power going through those wires mm -hmm. and if we left that going what would happen to the wires they'd fuse together they'd melt right because of all the current they'd overheat and melt mm -hmm. so, so that's what the breakers are for these are simply to uh, protect them. So cool. they screw in, the wires go in and they'll screw in. And a lot of people use these 
to twist the wires together, you shouldn't do that. You should take a pair of pliers. Remember the dikes, the yeah. big wide ones? You take the dikes and you spin those. You go ahead and you get the wires nice and twisted and then you cut the ends off square and then you put a wire nut on them. Good to know. Okay? Yes, sir. Any questions? Nope. Any answers? N no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks, Dad. Sure, buddy. See ya. See ya.